Good morning, everyone. My name is Adam Perone. Uh, I am a uh, Native American man. Uh, I have medium length brown hair, brown eyes, and uh, I'm sitting in my dining room right now um, with a background that is light brown. Um, but again, just wanted to say good morning and welcome you to the 2022 uh, Native Forum celebration. I'm calling you from uh, Kahuya territory in Riverside, California. And um, yeah, I am the interim director of the indigenous program here at uh, Sundance Institute. I'm also one of the uh, short film programmers with the short film team uh, for the festival. Um, before we get started, I would like to give a, um, a land acknowledgement, not just um, from where I'm calling from, which I had mentioned, which is the Kahuya territory, but also um, to acknowledge the land and the traditional keepers of those lands where all of Sundance's offices take place or where they rest, uh, uh, excuse me, um, from Los Angeles, um, the Los Angeles offices, which reside on the lands of the, the traditional lands of the Tongva, the Tataviam and Chumash nations. And in, the, in New York, uh, the New York office, the Lenape lands and with uh, our Park City, Utah office, which is also where our, our festival is traditionally held as well as um, our labs, uh, the Ute tribal nation, with that, I, it's my pleasure to introduce um, our new, uh, the new CEO of Sundance Institute, Joanna Vincente. Uh, Joanna started back in uh, September. Uh, previously, she came from TIFF, where she was the executive director and co-head. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, working with her very briefly on an indigenous advisory board over there. And uh, so it's great to have her here. Um, this is also her first um, Native Forum at the festival. So um, I want to welcome Joanna. Thank you so much for being here, Joanna. Thank you, Adam. That was just beautiful. Um, I'm a Portuguese woman with brown hair and brown eyes, 5'2", wearing a black blazer with a brown cream scarf. And my background is a virtual background of the Egyptian theater in Park City. First, I wanted to extend thanks to the Youth Tribal Nation for giving Sundance a home for the last 40 years and to all the indigenous program supporters. You make this important work possible and we are very grateful. I wanna thank Mia Taro and the Cherokee Nation Film Office for underwriting today's gathering and to offer a special thanks to the donors behind the Merita Mita Fund fellowship, because of you, we're able to continue to honor Merita's remarkable life, work, and legacy with support that generates compelling and crucial work. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to experience the festival as a producer, a juror, and an audience member. I've taken part in the Institute's year-round work to support artists, and Sundance has always felt like a home for me. So I am thrilled to be back home here with all of you. I was excited to join the Institute because of its mission to support indigenous voices and stories. And I am dedicated not only to continue the work, but growing our commitment. Native and indigenous filmmakers were a key part of Robert Redford's vision when he founded Sundance Institute, and they remain one of our most vibrant and dynamic communities. It's been another remarkable year for indigenous artists, and we are humbled and grateful to be part of their story. Our team at Sundance, under the leadership of Bird Running Water, and now Adam Piran, had been cultivating and fostering these artists, voices and stories with immense care and passion. They are present in communities, finding new talent and developing pathways that allow the next generation of native and indigenous filmmakers to join us here as artists. This program is inflecting our cultural dialogue and has not only fostered a community, but has created a family of indigenous filmmakers and artists spanning three generations. Stories like these from programs like these underscore how we can, we can and why we must broaden our cultural conversation. This program has become the model for our outreach and inclusion work across the Institute. So thank you Adam and team for your dedication and passion to making independent film richer, more inclusive and more beautiful. Congratulations to all the artists we're celebrating this morning. We look forward to continuing our relationship for many years to come. 
And now it's my pleasure to introduce Amy Redford. Thank you, Joanna. Hi, everyone. My name is Amy Redford. My preferred pronouns are she, her. I'm a white 51-year-old woman with shoulder length, usually messy blonde hair and blue eyes, definitely in need of more sleep. Um, I'm wearing a black shirt and sitting in front of a wall of windows and a large fig leaf tree. I'm joining you from Salt Lake City. This land, which is named for the Ute tribe, is the traditional and ancestral land of Shoshone, Paiute, Goshute, and the Ute tribe. I'm so honored to be with you today, not only as an alumni and trustee of the Sundance Institute Board, but also as a member of the Redford family. The Native and Indigenous program is a cornerstone of all that we do. More than 40 years ago, my dad created the Sundance Institute as a way to provide a nest for artists to develop their projects and stories, to take risks and to fail without it being failed. It, and to fail without it being fatal. As a storyteller himself, he saw the importance of diversity not only in the stories, but in the storytellers, the byproduct of which has been generations of artists who have changed the cultural landscape. He could see the importance of exchange as many advisors spoke of feeling like they had received more than they had given by participating in the nourishing of new talent. In his own work, he often tries to give voice to the voiceless and make seen is seemingly invisible. This is also manifest in his commitment to preserving and protecting the earth's natural resources. His happiest place then and now remains in the trenches with storytellers encouraging them to stand courageous about what they want to say and how they want to say it. In the early years of my dad's career, he noticed the absence of native writers and directors and he began to mentor them not only for their benefit, but for ours. In keeping with his early work, he invited Native American filmmakers, Larry Littlebird and Chris Spotted Eagle to participate in the founding meetings of the Institute and its labs back in 1981. I would also like to thank Larry Sespooch for doing the blessing at our labs for so many years. It's such an amazing part of what we do and such an important kickoff to the work. My father and I would also like to say a quick thank you to Bird who was the steward and leader of the indigenous program for over 20 years. I can't even believe that. Um, through creative deep thinking, Bird advanced our program to meet the needs of modern native artists. He brought generations together to teach one another, hosted our programs on native lands, and has not only been a steadfast advocate for indigenous voices around the world, but also an inspiration for artists throughout all of our programs. It was an honor to witness his evolution and contributions to our leadership team. Thank you, Bird, wind in your wings. As someone whose creative birthplace was in the Institute programs, I've been spoiled by the abundance of generosity, creativity, free expression, and increasing diversity in our ecosystem. We are so proud to affirm these values every day through the wonderful work of the staff and artists we support making our, gen our organization hold true to the founding values by continuing to challenge and change. So welcome, Joanna. I want to recognize all of the incre incredibly talented storytellers in the room. I am constantly stunned and humbled by your amazing work. We are so honored to support your voices and vision, and we wish you every success in Sundance and far, far into the future. Thank you so much. Okay, Adam, take it away. Thanks so much, Amy and uh, Joanna. Um, you know, again, with our program, we, none of this uh, could be possible without your continued support and leadership. Um, and, you know, we thank you for the, the legacy that our program also has within the Institute and uh, the platform that it's provided for Indigenous artists. Um, you know, 2021 was a particularly challenging year, um, you know, as all of us continue to live uh, through this pandemic and other events, many of which they're, you know, they're still casting shadows on our everyday lives. We've lost many friends, relatives um, over the past year and uh, so many of our precious elders. This has been especially heartbreaking since the loss of our elders, um, you know, within our communities, it's, they contribute to important components and connections of our own culture, including languages and uh, traditions as well. Throughout this, uh, throughout this, pandemic that continues into this coming year, you know, we have to value even more our strength as Indigenous people and our values and our traditions. 
uh, the resiliency that um, comes within our culture and within our history and the creativity of our, of our culture and our artists as well too. And we'll always continue to focus on new ways to express ourselves um, and our art, in this case, virtually, especially with this year in this festival. You know, here at um, the Institute, um, the Indigenous program specifically within the Institute, there have been opportunities in the midst of these challenges where we've been given chances to reassess and really shift a lot of the ways we've been working and to really sort of reimagine and innovate a lot of our programming. Throughout this pandemic year, we've come to value even more strength, um, again, not just from our values and traditions, but also from our artists as well and their communities um, and our own communities as well. You know, their resiliency and creativity has been a huge inspiration, um, not just to us, but I feel like to other, um, other communities as well. And um, I think kind of going off of that as well, too, I think it's, it's important to kind of give um, a little bit of a history on the Native Forum itself. Uh, it was created back in 1994, specifically to highlight and premiere uh, films and works by Native filmmakers that were in attendance at the festival. The forum has become a place for um, Indigenous artists to gather, share their stories and their experiences and struggles, and I think most importantly, to build a community. And I think, you know, one of the things specifically with our community in, in, in the forum is that none of it would have been possible without our continued uh, support by some of our sponsors. Um, in the case of this year in particular, I really want to thank and, and highlight the support by Neotero and the Cherokee Nation Film Office. I, I think it's incredibly unique also that our program, you know, with these with these organizations, with them being also native run and led, um, I think it's it's incredibly special, especially given this this year and everything that we're going through. Um, but with that, I think, you know, representing Neotero, I would like to um, introduce uh, or sorry, um, to start off actually with the Cherokee Nation Film Office. Um, I would like to introduce uh, Jennifer Lauren and uh, Chief Chuck Hoskins, Jr. Um, Jennifer, take it away. Wado, Adam. Jennifer Lauren, Da Wado. Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Lauren. I am, a, for my description, I am a white and Cherokee woman. I have long brown hair with brown eyes. I'm wearing a green jacket. I'm at home in front of a bookcase wearing some beautiful Cherokee beaded earrings. And my home is in Tulsa, which is in the Muscogee Creek Nation. I am a documentary filmmaker and I'm also the director of the Cherokee Nation Film Office and original content for the Cherokee Nation. I wanna say Wado Sundance, thank you for having us and for leading native film to where it is today. Uh, I am honored to be part of this forum Sad, of course, we're not there uh, in Utah celebrating together. For those of you who don't know about us at the Cherokee Nation Film Office, we just celebrated our third birthday yesterday. And uh, we have been at Sundance for um, every, well, the first year, the first couple of years, um, and then of course, virtual the last two. Uh, the Cherokee Nation Film Office is here, not only for Cherokee Nation citizens and filmmakers, but we're here for all Native American filmmakers. Our official mission is to increase the presence of Native Americans in film and television industries at every level while creating jobs and opportunities for economic development here in the Cherokee Nation. The Cherokee Nation is a reservation in the 14 counties of Northeastern Oklahoma. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we have a lot going on in Oklahoma, specifically in this part of Oklahoma with film and television uh, and specifically Native film and television projects. There is a lot of growth here. And on that note, we had hoped to make a very big announcement there um, it, at Sundance in Utah today. We're still going to make this big announcement. But we're going to do it here on Zoom. So for that, I would love to introduce uh, the chief of the principal chief of the Cherokee Nation, Chuck Hoskin Jr., who is joining us from our new virtual production soundstage here in the Cherokee Nation. And Chief Hoskin has been a great leader and he truly believes in film and television. Chief Hoskin, take it away. What oh, Jennifer and OCO everyone. Uh, I am uh, here in our studio in Owasa within the Cherokee Nation Reservation and I'm so excited to be with you. Uh, the Cherokee Nation Film Office has had, had such an impact on our people. It's generating so much enthusiasm and so much optimism for the future. 
uh, being part of the film industry is something that's very important to me as chief because I believe in it. I believe in its power. And I am certain that it's in the best interest of the Cherokee Nation for us to partner all we can and develop the industry. A partnership has been key to our success. My goodness, it's only been three years since we've been at this, but we've developed so many strong relationships both in the industry and with state and local partners. And we want to continue in that spirit with this announcement today. So today, I'm pleased to announce that we will commit up to $1 million in annual funding for rebates for productions to happen within the Cherokee Nation Reservation. And, and Jennifer Lauren will attest that it's just a beautiful landscape here in Northeast Oklahoma. Our 7,000 square mile reservation uh, provides so many opportunities for storytelling we invite you to come here and this incentive will of course be a powerful tool tool it'll be powerful for the industry it'll be a powerful tool of economic development for the cherokee nation i'm excited at the uh, prospects of bringing uh, more production to our reservation uh, more opportunities for our people to go to work more opportunities to develop relationships in the industry and what's particularly exciting to me is this creates even more opportunity for indigenous storytellers to tell their story and i know that we need more of that so uh, jen it's just a pleasure to make this announcement i'm looking forward to the future thank you so much for what you do Wado, Chief Hoskin. Yeah, thank you so much, Jennifer and uh, Chief Hoskin. Um, with that, I would like to uh, pass it along to our other uh, sponsor um, uh, at Neotero, and um, representing Neotero will be Tracy Rector, who has been um, not only a longtime friend but also an alumni of or an alum of the Indigenous program. So I will, Tracy, take it away. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. My name's Tracy Rector, and I am calling in from the traditional homelands of the Puyallup peoples within Coast Salish territory in the Pacific Northwest. In terms of my visual description, I am a mixed heritage woman with medium brown skin, hair that runs past my shoulders, dark hair with a silver streak. I have thick rimmed glasses, a nose ring, and a black shirt on. And my background is of um, a picture taken in Navajo Nation. Uh, we are a young organization as well. Neotero is just over four years old, and this is our third year supporting Sundance, the indigenous forum and the native forum uh, as they have transitioned uh, are incredibly impactful programs, not only because of the mission, but because of those behind it. Adam, Annette, Moy, and of course, Bird. It's been uh, an amazing family to be part of, but also we so believe in the work. At Neotero, uh, just a little bit about who we are. We are a US-based nonprofit working in solidarity with indigenous peoples and movements worldwide. We are both non-indigenous and indigenous. Our staff and leadership have these diverse experiences to bring to the table as we are a bridging organization committed to indigenous self-determination and inclusive culture guided by indigenous wisdom practices and protocols in all that we do. Um, I cannot say enough about narrative sovereignty and the importance of this moment, which in my estimation is not only a moment, but is a manifestation of decades of hard work and dreams of many ancestors who have carried us forward to this point in time. Indigenous storytelling is powerful, it's making waves, and thank you to so many who have um, that, whose shoulders we stand upon. Lastly, I would like to um, say thank you to all of the fellows who take part in this work and who trust and share their visions um, and allow us to be part of this journey. One very special fellow who we work with at Neotero is Britt Hensel, citizen of the Cherokee Nation. And uh, we're so excited that uh, she is premiering or she premiered her film last night. Um, as part of the Sundance programming. There's so much talent, there's so many 
filmmakers and voices and creatives. And we look forward to um, continuing this path together with Sundance, Cherokee Nation, and all others who are committed to uplifting this work. Thank you, Adam. Thanks so much, Tracy. Um, with that, you know, I wanted to um, make a special shout out in particular to our former director, Bird Running Water. Um, I know he's watching right now. Um, you know, but Bird, um, Bird led the indigenous program here at Sundance over um, just a little over 20 years. Um, I met Bird originally as a, a film school student when I started um, as an intern in the indigenous program back in 2007. Um, Bird, throughout that time, you know, I, I worked in various capacities within the indigenous program, but um, there was always one constant, which I always found, you know, with Bird, not just in terms of his leadership, but also his friendship, uh, mentorship. And, um, you know, I think he was always just somebody that I could um, reach out to and, 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 you know, talk any sort of doubts or problems or, um, you know, he's always, he was always somebody that was there to, to give affirmations and to really um, stress the importance, not just of narrative sovereignty, as Tracy had just mentioned, but in particular, um, you know, issues around visibility and really empowering Indigenous artists um, to tell their own stories on their own terms and however they wanted to tell it. Um, and, you know, just wanted to acknowledge too, in particular, um, this program would not be where it's at without Bird's leadership, um, his vision for how to shape it. And, you know, all, all of the artists that I know are also probably in attendance that are a part of his legacy of work here too. You know, we're really proud and happy for Bird as well too. He recently signed a deal with Amazon. Um, and uh, yeah, he'll be continuing a lot of his work with, um, with working with indigenous artists and also increasing their vis visibility both in uh, film and TV. Um, so with that, we have a little video um, that we would like to um, we would like to highlight Bird's legacy. So yeah, take it away. Hi, I'm Nick Ortiz, and you're on Native Ground, and I'm with Bird Running Water. Okay, that is a really tight name. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so, well, I uh, work for Sundance Institute. I'm a programmer for the festival, so I'm one of the people who picks oh. the films that get shown here at Sundance. I think my passion lies in storytelling. You know, I think as Native people, it's one of the things that have, I don't know if we often recognize enough that we have possess inherently is this ability to be storytellers, no matter what. No matter what the format is, whether if it's a written format or a verbal format, or now I think with you know filmmaking with visual, you know, a visual format, we've had the development of an of an American film culture, an American film narrative, you know, that has been very kind of very Western specific because hardly anyone else was allowed to participate in the creation of narrative and the creation of films besides white men, um, even until today. Sundance Institute's Native American and Indigenous program has built is an Indigenous film circle. The circle kind of starts with all these different filmmakers coming from different lands and different places, and they can come in through uh, the different support mechanisms that we have within the Institute. The relationship that I've had with Bird over the years, his dream to, you know, to keep changing, evolving, and just making, shaping this lab into something, into what it is. Like, our relationship has become very rich, and like, I've, you know, always sort of felt like I can turn to him and to Alan for, you know, to the Native, Native Initiative. It was about this community that, that grew out of the Sundance Film Festival, which was like an indigenous film community. That's where we all kind of gathered, and that's where we got to know each other, and that's where we became close. I, I became lifelong friends through Bird. We, we became a community, we became a family. These labs speak to the human condition. More than anything, what we're looking for now in the world is, uh, is harmony. Bird Running Water is absolutely maverick in terms of the work that he's done, not just for native cinema, but also for independent cinema. I had one hope. I hoped that I could have an impact on the invisibility of Native Americans in our own homelands and in American popular culture. Thank you, Bird. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I hope that gives everybody, you know, a bit, um, you know, just a just a taste of how much we we appreciate and how much we look up to Bird, and um, you know, also how much we'll we'll miss him. But you know, he's always just a phone call away. Um, he'll always be right there whenever we need to reach out to him, or um, you know, need a shoulder to cry on, or somebody to pick us back up. Um, but um, yeah, with that, I would actually like to uh, turn actually turn it back to Jennifer Lauren uh, briefly. I think we can talk a little bit more uh, just briefly about the um, the Cherokee Nation Film Office and um, a bit more about their announcement really quick. Wado, Adam, uh, yes, absolutely. Bird, thank you so much for your leadership. Uh, truly appreciate everything you've done. Um, and I also wanted to congratulate Cherokee Nation citizen Britt Hensel on her film in Sundance this year. I had an opportunity to, to see it over the weekend. It's wonderful. Um, and to Nia Taro and Tracy Rector, congratulations on your film. Um, really quickly, I wanted to let you all know if you're interested in learning more about the Cherokee Nation Film Incentive, it is going to be a 20% cash rebate. It will incentivize people to hire native writers, to use native written scripts, to hire native cast and crew. All of the information will very soon be available on our website, cherokee.film. So please uh, go to our website, sign up for our newsletter, follow us on social media. And again, I can't say enough um, about how much we appreciate being part of this uh, Indigenous Forum here at Sundance and all of the work so many people have done to get us to this point um, today. Wado, Adam, back to you. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Um, you know, I think also kind of touching both on that as well as, um, you know, Bird's legacy, I think one of the things in terms of a key component, I think, of this of this community um, is the Indigenous program team um, of themselves. So, um, as of right now, I would like to give a quick shout out to my team. They really are a dream team. Um, Yoneta Lay, who uh, is from uh, Wailua, Hawaii, um, Samoan. She's the um, senior manager of our program. Uh, Moy Santos, uh, coordinator. And uh, the latest addition to our team, Katie Arthurs, who's uh, Chickasaw. And um, again, too, they, they've done an amazing job so far with this festival. It's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And, uh, you know, they are the ones that do a lot of the heavy lifting. And um, this program wouldn't be where it is without them. And I think, you know, also it's something that um, I'm really grateful to Bird as well, too, for um, really cultivating um this team and you know sort of the vision for how it operates um and you know and i think also too i think really sort of blessing me with these um these team members um as he he left because i don't think you know this program would not be running the way that it does um with without them and a little bit more on that as well too you know we um just to also sort of highlight a lot of their work you know this team in particular managed this past year managed um, over 30 active artists um, throughout this year. So that included everything from a number of different workshops, uh, programming, um, some publications that we did, online publications, and uh, some of our labs and um, other uh, events that we did for our um, for our fellows as well too. And I think you know, going into that, I, I also wanted to highlight some of the work um, of our program that was again run by um, run by our team through a lot of their uh, their hard work. Um, I think we can start on the um, program highlight slide. Um, you know, I think to to kick it off, I think one of the things that we we did in really sort of responding to the pandemic was trying to figure out a way that we could reach indigenous communities um, that we hadn't before. And one of the ways that we did that was through our Indigenous Shorts Tour. Um, it highlighted specifically seven short films that had played at the festival, uh, previous editions of the festival in a program. We were able to partner with um, not just Indigenous or like Native community centers and museums, but also art house cinemas um, for a virtual run of this, uh, this program. We were also able to do it uh, free as well too, but it was great because I think we were also able to reach a number of different communities that wouldn't have been able to have access to this um, if it had just been in a theatrical setting. Um, so I'm really proud um, of our team for being able to um, to put this program together and again, you know, reach new members of our community as well too. Um, I also wanna give a shout out to Moy Santos uh, in particular for her Perspectives blog series. 
Uh, she was really able to do, um, again, with this, this publication that we were able to do through the Sundance site, it was a really thoughtful and really meaningful um, way to highlight a lot of our alumni and their experiences and some of our current artists as well too. Um, and it was really able to look at indigeneity as a spectrum and especially what that looks like for a lot of our artists um, and what their work means to them in, in that regard. We were also able to have our second edition of the Indigenous List. Um, this was our partnership with the Blacklist and Illuminative. It was a platform where we're able to highlight some of the some of the strongest work by Indigenous artists that are working in the industry. And um, you know, I think it was also really able to spotlight them, uh, their work, and also um, you know, open them to some opportunities. Um, so we will be announcing the um, the the selection for for those artists. Uh, for this new for this upcoming second edition of the indigenous list coming soon um 2021 was also the third year of our collaboration with movie um which is the uh, streaming platform that specializes in um both foreign and art house cinema uh, we were able to include nine indigenous uh, short films from again from previous sundance festivals it was different than the indigenous shorts tour so i would uh, encourage you to check it out and you can also sign up for their platform, uh, have a free seven day trial. Um, so you can still check this out. Um, and we will be having a new, um, the new selection and what the new uh, curation of, uh, of this collaboration, what that will be in this coming year. Um, we were also able to do um, our full circle capstone, um, which this was sort of a culmination of the full circle fellowship. Um, for those of you that know um, what the full circle fellowship was, it is a, a fellowship that highlights or that really sort of specifically targets and um, and supports indigenous youth ages 18 to 25 from New Mexico, Michigan and Mississippi. Um, so this started I this started back in 2014, I believe. Um, and so we were able to bring all of those cohorts of the alumni together um, for sort of a virtual summit type experience where we were able to, um, you know, really break down what do they want out of their careers creatively and, um, you know, how can we better enforce and how can they also um, collaboratively sort of um, enforce their own community. Um, I think it was a really beautiful thing to see, um, to see them not only rise up to the occasion, but I think also how we were able to help them with some of the, the different opportunities of working um, in a number of different levels on, on various films. Next slide. Um, and with that, I think, you know, one of the things uh, with our, um, with the, that was a highlight actually of this past year was we were able to do another edition of our uh, native lab. This year in, in particular was um, a change from how we had done it in previous years where, you know, the focus of our lab previously had been around um, the production of short films where we would be test shooting a, uh, a scene um, and they'd be working with advisors, but with this past year, we were able to, um, we were able to shift the focus to screenwriting, um, specifically with feature films and uh, episodic pilots. Um, and again, too, that was also, we were very fortunate to have the, um, the support of uh, Warner Media with that. And, um, and uh, yeah, I think, you know, with that as well, too, we were able to do this virtually um, over the, the course of two weeks. Um, and uh, as well as um, we also had the support of the Indigenous Screen Office in Canada. Um, and uh, yeah, I would like to uh, highlight some of the, the fellows, um, not just the fellows, but our artists and residents that we had with that lab. Um, starting off, we have uh, Ms. Gianna Elise, who's uh, Tlingit. Uh, her script, uh, Mia 2, is a feature uh, project that uh, specifically looks at a, uh, an indigenous woman who um, at sort of the urging of her mother um, gets more involved in some of the, the tribal politics of her, her tribe and some of that leadership and, um, you know, kind of goes through her own journey of uh, development and growth and, uh, you know, some of the, the, the uh, how, how would I put this, um, you know, some of the, uh, the gray areas of what that can explore as well too, specifically when it comes to uh, tribal leadership. Uh, next, we have Don Tulagok Avery, who's in Yupiak. Uh, their, uh, their pilot, Mama Dragon, it looks at um, an ex-Mormon uh, queer woman who is raising her non-binary child, um, but it also focuses on a group of uh, Mormon mothers who um, form a, uh, 
a support group for their uh, their queer children. And um, it's a really it's a really fascinating script. I think it's something that is also going to be um, it's it has such a unique style and such a unique voice. And, um, you know, Don is an alum of our program as well, too. So it's been great to see them get to uh, to this point specifically with where they've gotten that with this uh, pilot over the last year. We also have Alexandra Lazarovich, who's Cree. Um, her feature film uh, script, Sweet Home Reservation, is a romantic comedy that looks at an indigenous uh, fashion designer who works in New York City and uh, has to go back to uh, her Cree reservation with uh, her fiance uh, after the, the death of her aunt. But it's um, it's really great. I think it looks again at um, at indig like it, at indigenous families um, and particularly what that looks like and you know again some of the misadventures that can uh, come about that especially when there are um, you know outsiders that are sort of new to that environment as well too so um, we're really happy to be supporting uh, Alex on uh, on her feature as well and uh, we have Bryson Chun who's Kanaka Mali uh, his episodic pilot Boy Dogs um, looks at uh, a high-end dog groomer in Hawaii, um, who finds out that they have a hit of, hit on that that's been put on them through the dark web? Um, it's a really great um, stylistic piece, and I really um, again to just seeing Bryson's growth over the years um, in terms of not just being a writer, but in terms of his own vision for his work. Um, it's been really rewarding to work with him, and it's been really re rewarding to work with all four of these artists over the past year. Um, next slide. Um, with that as well too, we had our artists in residence who um, had participated in our in our this past lab as well. Um, the first of which we have is uh, Shireen Gonzalez uh, with uh, her episodic pilot Rosa at Booth Five Fifteen. Um, it's a I think it's a really great and again also a really unique story that looks at um, uh, not just the culture within Santa Fe around Indian artists, but also you know around sort of Indian market as well. But also, again, sort of what what life looks like for a lot of those artists who are navigating that environment, and um, and yeah, I think yeah, I'm, we're really happy for Shireen. Again, Shireen has uh, really grown since she first came to us as a um, as a full circle fellow, and um, yeah, and then we also have Tommy Pico, who's Kumiai. Um, his script sometimes, which looks at a um, a musician um, based out of Brooklyn who goes back to their um, their res in Southern California, and um, them you know literally confronting the ghosts of their past. Um, it sort of plays on both I think a lot of surreal um, a lot of surreal elements, but in a way that I think is um, something that I haven't necessarily seen. I'm really excited to see this film uh, when this film does get made because I think again to Tommy, um, not just as a writer, but you know has such a unique uh, voice in such a unique way of how they look at um, not just their own community, but I mean, you know, even in terms of just like a, a general experience of indigeneity um, now in particular. And so I think that it's, it's uh, again, we're super stoked to have both of them as uh, artists in residence during this past year. And uh, going back uh, to go somewhat full circle, we have our full circle, full circle fellows for this year. Um, to start off, um, again, to th these, um, we worked with and we searched for these artists uh, across New Mexico, Michigan, and Mississippi. And uh, we were really, um, I think, you know, we were all like very um, delighted to, to find these artists um, and, you know, and we also sort of like to, to get introduced to their work and sort of like where they've come from as well too. Um, so starting off, uh, we have Jamie John, from the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians, um, currently based out of Traverse City. Um, Jamie is an amazing artist. I think also has a, um, a strong heart for activism and has been really involved in, um, I think in indigenous issues and really sort of um, putting their heart into, into that and figuring out the intersection between art and how they can make real change uh, for our communities. So again, uh, Jamie, it's been great to work with you over this past year. Um, Sarah Lease, who's Diné and uh, Turtle Mountain Band of uh, Chippewa Indians, who uh, right now is in Ohio um, finishing up school, but uh, it's been also great to work with, with Sarah and also see a lot of her work, um, and particularly her background in journalism as well too, and see her passion for um, uh, bringing indigenous issues um, 
to light and to also you know really explore explore them through uh through both documentary and journalism and uh christina zuni as well too is from newsletter pueblo in new mexico um christina uh was able to work on um on a set for um dark winds that film or sorry that um that series and uh it's been great i think as well too because i think christina has really been able to be uh She's really been able to be a part of the community of alum that alumni that we have in New Mexico. Um, and it's been great to see her work um, and to gain more experience specifically working on film sets and as she's starting to work on some of her own projects as well too. So, you know, we're really proud of all three of them and, uh, you know, just the, the leaps and bounds that they've made in this past year, which, you know, again, hasn't been easy for anyone, but, you know, I think working in, in film and really sort of moving into that space as a young person right now is, uh, I think, you know, I think all of them have really uh, blown all of our expectations away, so. And with that, I would like to also highlight uh, the filmmakers and their projects that are at the festival this year. Um, starting off, we have um, a Wapsibita, uh, who is the lead artist of This Is Not A Ceremony. Um, Wapsivita, also in English, known as uh, Colin Van Loon. Uh, I think this is a piece that is um, playing in our New Frontier section. Uh, it's a really gorgeous VR piece. I encourage you, I encourage you all to check it out. Um, Alika Tengan, who's Kanaka Maui, um, with their feature, their feature debut, actually, Every Day in Kaimuki, actually just premiered as well, too. Um, I think, you know, I think one of the things, too, I think, with Alika's film with Everyday in Kaimuki, it's our it's the one indigenous feature that we have in the uh the festival this year. But I think just to highlight also um the strength of this film and how great it is, you know, this year we had over um 3,700 features that were submitted and only 82 that were selected. So um I think it's again to also knowing the trajectory of Alika's work over the last couple of years um within. Uh, indigenous cinema, this is something that I think everybody has been waiting to see for a long time, especially with it being the first Native Hawaiian uh, feature film that's played at Sundance. Um, so yeah, um, definitely check it out if you can. As um, as mentioned both by uh, Tracy at uh, Neotero as well as Jennifer with the Cherokee Nation Film Office, uh, Britt Hensel's short film, uh, Udinoye, uh, sorry, um, Udiyone, which is also translates as what they've been taught um, is a short film. It's actually playing in front of Alika's film. Um, but again, also on the short side, um, which I'm on that team there, we had over 10,300 submissions this year. We ended up choosing uh, 60, but uh, Brit's film was one of those. And uh, we're super, you know, super proud and stoked to have it included in the program. It's a really strong work. So I encourage you all to check it out. There's, uh, we also have within our shorts program, uh, Don Josephus Raphael Eplahan. Um, he is um, Fugao and Visayan, um, an indigenous filmmaker from the Philippines. Um, his work, um, or sorry, his short, The Headhunter's Daughter is a really beautiful short. I encourage you all to uh, check it out. There is, uh, we also have in our new frontier section, uh, Dr. Jamaica uh, Heliomelia uh, Kalani, Osorio, um, who is one of the lead artists on on the morning you wake to the end of the world. Um, again, that is in our um, our new frontier section. Um, and um, we also Shindine Tome, who is one of the co-directors of Long Line of Ladies um, with uh, Rika Zidabachi, uh, also in our shorts program. Um, so yeah, definitely check those out. We have Sky Hopinka, who is Ho-Chunk and Pachanga. Um, who was the director of the experimental uh, short documentary Kicking the Clouds. Um, I believe this is his fifth time at the festival this year. So um, again, um, definitely check his film out in the short section. And both, uh, the, uh, both of the lead artists um, with Atua, which is a New Frontier uh, project as well. It's an AR piece, but you're able to still experience it on the, the spaceship that we have is uh, Tanu Nano, who's Samoan, and uh, Jermaine Dean, who's Maori. Um, again, it's a really beautiful piece, and I encourage you all to uh, check out the schedule and um, see when you can experience it on the spaceship. 
And uh, to close it off within our uh, short film program, uh, there's Sochil Enriquez Mendoza, who's a Zapoteca filmmaker from Mexico. Um, her short Maidenhood is a, also, again, a really beautiful look at uh, indigeneity and uh, femininity um, within uh, the Zapoteca community in Mexico. And um, yeah, definitely check um, check all of these out. The, the feature, the five shorts and the um, three New Frontier um, works that we have playing at the festival. I think it's a, it's a particularly strong year this year. And um, again, to just sort of with the numbers that I had quoted before, this is, um, you know, the competition is very steep, but I think that this, the, the work and just of all of the, um, the filmmakers here, I think it's really important to celebrate these works because they are incredibly strong and, you know, we're so happy and uh, so proud to be showcasing a lot of this work and these voices. Um, and yeah, again, really strong year. We're proud of all of them and just wanted to say congrats to all of the artists and our fellows that are, um, that are participating in the festival this year. So with that, um, which is, this is always the, uh, the highlight of our uh, Native Forum celebration um, for, I'm gonna say since we started, since we started the Merit to Fellowship back in 2015, um, a little bit about this fellowship, um, you know, it's named in honor of Merit to um, I was lucky to know Merita uh, briefly. Uh, I wanna say, I, I think I first met Merita back in, it was either, I think it was 2009, um, but Merita was such a fierce filmmaker. You know, she was also one of the um, the first indigenous uh, women to solely direct a feature film um, out of uh, out of New out of Aotearoa, um, New Zealand. I think Merita had such a fierce spirit about everything she did, and there was such an integrity to to her work, um, not just in terms of how it um, how she worked with communities, but in particularly in terms of preserving the integrity of the voice and um, and you know uh, the obligation that um, indigenous filmmakers have to our own communities, and in terms of um, upholding our voices and supporting each other as well. Too, I think um, this this fellowship, in particular, in honoring her legacy, it um, supports an indigenous filmmaker who is working on her first feature film. And um, we've had um, a number of different people over the years. There's Tiara Lacey. Elamaya Tail Feathers, um, Ainsley Gardner, um, to name a few. There's there have been there have been a number of other ones as well too. Um, Leah Hale, um, uh, yeah. And I think you know I think just for and I apologize too for um, everybody that um, I'm blanking on right now as well too. But I think all of these filmmakers have all had such. Oh yeah, and. Uh, uh, Mario Balnango, who actually uh, was just became, uh, she was just selected for this past um, uh, Screenwriters Lab uh, with the feature film program here at Sundance. So we've been super proud to support her as well too during this past year. I think again too, I think the the work and the um, and the the just the the dedication that all of these artists have had over the past year, it's been um, something that we've really been able to honor and uh, Merita's, Merita's legacy and something that I think we're really proud to, to do every year. And, you know, we're always looking for who can that next filmmaker be, you know, who, um, who, who can we support that we feel is like at a very critical moment in their, in their, um, their journey towards making their, their feature film. And um, this year we would like to, um, well, this year it, it, it took us a little while to um, to uh, decide on who we were going to end up selecting because there were so many strong candidates. Um, and I think, you know, also as more people have gotten familiar with Merit's legacy here in the States and uh, outside of New Zealand as well, too, I think that um, there's been a lot of work that's very actively reflected her her spirit and, um, and the quality of her work. So um, so we've been particularly happy with that. But with that, I would like to um, I would like to announce who our 2022 uh, Merit Fellow will be. Uh, we have selected Fox Maxi, who is a, a, a Payam, uh, Payam Kawicham and Mesa Grand Band of Indians uh, artist. They're currently based in uh, just around San Diego on their reservation out there. And, um, you know, their work has been screened at BAMFest. Um, 
that last year their one of their short films won the top short prize at the Rotterdam uh, International Film Festival. Uh, their work's also been playing played at Imaginative, uh, MoMA Doc Fortnite, LACMA, AFI Docs, and uh, Camden International Film Festival, among uh, many other places. But uh, Fox has such a unique voice, uh, something that has been so um, fiercely for and by their community. Um, you know, they've they have a very um, they've they currently live on the reservation and they've been working to fulfill various. Uh, traditional roles um, within within their culture that um, I think you know has been something where they've really been able to give to their community and um, you know and I think also be both a student and a leader within their community as well too. So with that, I will let uh, Fox uh, say a few words. Miu, my name is Fox Maxi. I am 2022's Meretha Mita Fellow for Sundance. I'm an artist, I'm a filmmaker, I'm Ipai and Paiyam Kuichum. I am from Miss Grandi Band of Mission Indians, and I'm here in San Diego. I'm very grateful to be honored with this opportunity and Mareta Mita was a powerful force of a filmmaker and a powerful force of a caretaker. Um, she cared for her family, for her land, for her culture, and she was fierce about it. She didn't, um, she didn't hold back and she told the truth and you know i think people tend to want to package things in a neat pretty and digestible way and i think Mareta was unafraid to show you everything the good the bad the ugly it's quite a legacy i think filmmaking as an art is something that saves me on the daily. I wouldn't be here if I didn't make my art. And, um, you know, that brings me to the fact that I want to thank the people who made me. <laughs> thank you to my mom, Virginia, my dad, Larry, my mom, May May my Uncle Chucky, my Aunt Patsy, my Uncle Poncho, my Uncle X, my Aunt Debbie, my Auntie Mercedes, my Uncle Fernando, my Cousin Tony, my Cousin Toby. I, I love you all and you guys teach me so much. I really wouldn't be the voice that I speak today without all of you so you know I'm I'm someone who doesn't want to hold back either I think I've spent a lot of time in professional training I worked in the fashion industry for a long time um, producing and designing and I worked for a documentary crew, a native documentary crew, um, producing, filming, editing documentaries, traveling to different reservations, uh, telling people to tell their stories and helping them, helping them to do that. And, you know, now I'm finally at a point, I think quarantine was the best thing that's ever happened to me. COVID this time period of COVID has been the best thing for me because it's allowed me to um, step into my own my own lane full on and I don't worry about anyone's opinions at all anymore and 
that's the biggest force behind my storytelling is don't listen to anybody you know what I mean I, I that's my biggest goal is to just share with people you can do whatever the hell you want you know and that's where I'm coming from whenever I set out to tell a story is I want people to know that they can do whatever they want in this life and nothing is guaranteed you know nothing is easy everything takes a lot of guts a lot of hard work but we can do what we want and this is also something that I would have loved to talk to Mareta about because I know she would have had this experience too you know I see it in her work and I see it um I see it as something that we we share in life there's a lot of predators out here men and women all types of industries all types of shapes and sizes people who want to take something from you and use it for their benefit that's what i mean they're all over and it's been a blessing to me to be able to make my own work and stand out on my own and do what I want to do without listening to any of the limits, any of the judgments, and any of the negativity that is flowing <laughs> around me. So, I want to say that I'm very excited for the future. I'm very grateful for all the people that I met along the way um, for this new native family of filmmakers that is budding, you know, trying to come out from beneath the ground. We've been hidden for a long time and we're finally getting to tell our own stories we're finally getting to design our own realities and i think it's so exciting i'm ready <laughs> and um i'm grateful for the opportunity to create thank you Thanks so much, Fox. You know, I also wanted to, um, I think with this opportunity as well too, I think um, none of this would be possible, um, this fellowship in particular, without the New Zealand Film Commission, their support, Susan Schilliday, um, Indigenous Media Initiatives, Exposure Labs, uh, Felix Culpa, Chelsea Wynn Stanley, Bird Running Water, Sterling Harjo, and Sarah Luther. I think this, um, Again, too, without their um, their support, none of this would be possible, and uh, we're incredibly grateful to uh, to keep Merita's um, uh, to keep pushing forward Merita's legacy through our program, through all of their support. So, thank you. Um, with that, I also just wanted to close um, really quick. As again, as I had mentioned, I think that this has been a particularly strong year for Indigenous film, um, both within and outside of our program as well, too. I think um, I keep this, I've been thinking a lot this year, um, particularly towards the end of the year of something that um, uh, a filmmaker, Daryl Oluke, who was actually at our festival last year, um, who's an amazing artist. He recently wrote in a scene, um, I quote, when faced with the violent history of cinema and its logics of storytelling, black, brown and indigenous artists can't afford to simply appropriate the prerogatives of white image makers. We have a different kind of history that requires us to move differently. I think that, um, again, sort of like reflecting on that a lot, I think that that's something that 
this program um, has been able to do, again, under BIRD's uh, leadership and as we go into this new chapter of the program. And um, again, to both within the Institute and the legacies uh, that have uh, upheld this program. So um, super grateful to, um, to be in this position to help move and advance a lot of that work. And again, too, I just wanted to say um, to all of the artists um, that, and our fellows as well too, that are participating this year in the festival, uh, congratulations. And again, we're so proud to be, um, to, to be building this legacy of indigenous film with you going forward. Um, and especially this year. Um, so thank you so much everybody for tuning in. Um, thank you for all of your support and I uh, hope you have a great festival. Um, thanks so much.